Hello and welcome. Welcome to video number two out of six. The six keys to living the most powerful, connected, free version of your life. Okay. What does a bulletproof life really mean? Not the kind that, you know, something happens and life just takes a rug from under you. And then you're just lost and you're confused of, you know, whether it is a heartbreak, whether it is, um, a loss of an identity, whether that is a job or some things that you have that you own, uh, or again, relationships. So how is it that we stay grounded, connected, focused, rooted, no matter the outer circumstances, because that is what it really means to live a bulletproof life. So how do we get to that? If you haven't watched the first video, definitely do. It's somewhere here. The link is there. Um, the first key that I covered is asking, what do I really want? Not somebody else, not what you've been taught to want. What do you really want? And this can be so ridiculously uncomfortable for many people. Now, some of you may be watching this, like, I know what I want. Do you though? Is it what you want? Have you actually connected? Have you been in meditation asking yourself, what do I really want? Because the truth is what we like and dislike is just, it's perspectives that we've gathered along our life. Why are you attracted to some people by repelled by others? Because you've observed some dynamics in your childhood. This is what mom did. This is what dad did. And therefore, this is how I choose my future partners. There's a way to drop all of that. And the more you begin to ask yourself that question, the more light just shines through. And you're letting go of those belief systems, those subconscious programs that are just replaying, just spitting back old patterns at you. And you're tuning into your essence, to the real you. What do you really want? So again, if you haven't checked out that video, definitely do. Today, we're covering the second key. What is the second key? The second key to living that truly bulletproof, powerful, loving, connected, and free life. Let's dive right in. Now, I want to warn you, this is going to be so uncomfortable for so many people because this goes against pretty much what most of us have been taught, okay? And that is, oh, I'm actually going to begin by sharing a story of a client that I worked with. Now, this person was absolutely incredible and still is. The impact they create within their community, all the things that they're just so much love towards people, it's incredible. Now, this person, at some point, couldn't do that anymore. They had to stop. They had to stop because of a health condition. Now, this was someone, when I was telling them about my practice, my Vipassana practice, that is, I was going into two weeks of isolation, just meditation, basically 10 hours per day for two weeks and absolutely no technology, no internet, nothing, no phone. Um, I was going into this practice for two weeks and they were saying like, wow, I could never do that. I can't even take a week out of my life. This very same person was forced to take two months out of their lives. Why? Why did they have to take two months out of their life? Because their body was just screaming, stop. Their body was just in this place of, I can't handle it anymore. Like it's, I'm done. And this is one of so many examples like that. Now I will get to what that key is, but just bear with me. Another example was in my own life when my father passed away and seemingly I thought, you know, the world will stop if I'm not here with my family doing the things that they need. And I didn't have a choice. I just had to leave. I left for a few days to go to the funeral. That was in another country and nobody died. Surprisingly, nobody died. And so often we go into this, I am needed and I'm contributing. And that could absolutely be true. However, the world is not going to stop. Now there's a, there's a bit more here to this. Why do we do that? Because our ego likes to make it about us because our ego wants to feel that it's snowball, that we're adding value, that I matter. In reality, and this I'm going a little bit deeper with this one, it's never about other people. It's always about you. I remember doing a session with a man and we got to this topic of, he was working on a trigger and I asked, um, we were basically talking about, this, this may seem radical for you, but just hear it until the end because there's a, there's a really, there's a big treasure here. 
were talking about his children and it was a trigger with his father and we got into okay why what would it mean to you if your kids died because he said well i don't want my kids to die and i said why not and he goes, well, what do you mean? I would be upset. I'm like, what would you be upset about? And this is part of my coaching. This is how I do my one-on-one -on -one sessions, just really going into being really aggressive with that ego because either you own it or it owns you. So I wasn't being insensitive in that moment. It's just that was one of the ways to really get to the root because a lot of people go in therapy for years and they talk it out or you know they walk on eggshells around the ego. I prefer the direct approach and that's why my clients get results so much faster. Within three three months, they're just, it's a completely different person that came in when we first started, when our first session. So this man was going into, I would be upset if my kids died, and I asked why. And question after question after question, the real reason was, well, if they die, then I won't be able to prove to my father that he that I did a better job, that he was a shitty dad. You see, and this wasn't an isolated case. Whenever we ask why, why, what are you afraid of? It always comes back to us. I'm not enough because that's what it was there. It's like, I feel like I'm not enough and I want to prove that he wasn't enough and that he did me wrong. So it's always about us. It's always about our not enoughness. It's always about us not wanting to die. The ego not wanting to die, not wanting to be perceived a particular way. Because again, what happens then? death oftentimes the the final question becomes the final answer is death i'm afraid of death so we think that we're there showing up for the world and we're often going into burnout mode of serving giving performing this is both true for men and women and all for what what is that worth if we're disconnected from ourselves so the second key to living that bulletproof life is daring to be selfish in order to be selfless. Now, what does that really mean? And a lot of people have argued with me on this, and I'm sure there will be many more in the present and in the present and future. Maybe if somebody presently is just watching this and saying, no, no, that's not true. I know so many mothers who would dare say, I'm happy as long as my children are happy. And I know what that's like because I grew up with a mother like that. And I also know that in reality, that is just bypassing and not and denying that God, life source, consciousness, energy within you. Because when we're putting other people in front of us, we're, we're putting other people's needs on a pedestal. First of all, we're not serving them. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. But we're also just denying our own greatness. And we're not even seeing theirs. And... Oh, there's just so many different aspects of this. Let us begin with, I'm just going to cover them very briefly because I am mindful of the time. I don't want this video to go on forever. And this really is a whole workshop of just how to learn to be selfish in order to be selfless. Maybe I could do a workshop on that in the Powerful Self Membership. Um, so one, the first step is, the first key to this is that when we are there holding space for now. We're trying to support them. We're trying to provide for them. Like, oh my God, if I'm not there, what's going to happen to them? We're denying their ability to handle themselves. We're denying that God life source consciousness within them. And I know how hard this can be because I dealt with a parent who what, had alcoholism problems and was suicidal. And there came a point, and this was so hard for me, of just saying, you do what you do and I trust the light in you. And if that's what you got to do, then that's what you got to do. But I cannot be your float anymore. And that's what happens. We're walking in eggshells. We're trying to make it better. And I, I really, I, I mean, I understand how hard this is because I was thinking that I was helping, that I was making the situation better. In reality, I was robbing that person of their right to either learn how to swim or drown because I was serving as that float in the most well-meaning way. But it was also selfish, not in a be selfish to be selfless kind of way. It was just being selfish because I didn't want to address the problems. I didn't want to have to deal with, okay, what if they do um, commit suicide or do something? What if something does happen? And I would take on that burden and I don't want to deal with that. Again, ego, the ego makes it all about you. 
And so I would hide behind, well, this is what's better for them because I didn't want to face that within me. The ego is really tricky that way. And oftentimes it will seem so legitimate and so noble, like, no, but I really am doing that for them. Or sometimes, you know, a little white lie. It's like, I don't want to tell them the truth. Like I, I'm not standing in my integrity because that is how, what alignment is when our thoughts, words, and actions are in alignment. And I'm not standing in my integrity. I'm not living in my integrity. I'm not in my alignment because I don't want to hurt their feelings. So it's not about what I'm doing. It's not about changing my words or being honest. It's because I don't want to hurt their feelings. So the ego is really tricky in the ways that we hide, in the ways that we do not put ourselves first. And the key here, I think we're at key number two or three, is that how can you be happy? How can you add to anyone's happiness if you can't even be happy? How can you give to anyone when you can't even give to yourself? And again, so many people would disagree here saying there are so many memes on Instagram. Oh gosh, going around, you know, true strength is when you're hurting and you're trying to make someone else's day better. It's not, it's not, it's vibrationally not because the only advice that you can offer is from that place of hurt. When you are disconnected, you cannot give anything of value to another person because that which comes out of your mouth will be disconnected. It's out of alignment with source because when you're not feeling 100%, when you're not feeling that connection with, again, God, life, source, consciousness, whatever word you want to use, you have nothing to give. Everything that you give is filtered through the ego. So you're not actually adding value. If anything, you're confusing someone even more, let's say if you're giving advice or uh, like I said, everything is about us. So if you're doing that action step that's not fully from, oh my God, I feel so good and I want to give to this person. Like this is the action step that I want to take. This is how I want to add to their life. It will have repercussions in the long run. So key number two, and this is so difficult for many people. I know because we've been taught that We've been taught to share. Well, share your toys. Well, good kids share. And you're a jerk and a horrible person, a horrible human being, if you don't put others first. Putting others first is only done by putting yourself first because it is when you're able to be selfish, when you're able to put your frequency first, that you feel one with everything and with everyone. And therefore, you can't help but do good. Because you understand that whatever you do, you're doing to yourself because they are you and you are them. And this is not something that can be understood from the mind. This is only something that can be experienced when your heart is so full of love that there is no judgment, that you can't help but give, that you can't help but want to help and support and love. And not from this place of, oh my God, they're a poor thing. I have to save them. It's like, no, you see the opportunity in their struggles that they are themselves choosing. You see opportunity in your struggles because you understand like, wow, I've been choosing this this whole time. And there's just so much love because you see love through the eyes of God, consciousness, source, whatever you want to call it. And that takes that point of true selflessness is only reached through selfishness. Can you love yourself enough to do that? Can you love yourself enough to put your frequency first? Can you love yourself en enough to ask yourself, what do I need? And then give from the overflow. So on this note, if you want to take anything away from this, allow yourself, and I'm really giving you here like, it's very practical. The first question was, the first video was all about asking yourself, what do I really want? Just repeat like, okay, what else do I want? What else do I want? Because that first answer will be from the ego. And then you keep digging and digging and digging. Ask yourself on different days. Um, in the Powerful Self Monthly Membership, we do these soul inquiries where we keep coming into this and the answers are so different. And you, see, you can see the progression after a few months of, wow, I'm actually open now. Before I was like, okay, what do I really want? I want these practical things or the things that are shoulds and musts. And then after a few uh, months, you just see like, wow, my, I'm actually opening. I feel more alive. I feel more free because you keep digging. 
And with this one, with the second video, keep asking yourself, what do I really want? And it might go into, I want my kids to be happy, or, well, I, um, you know, like, what do I really need right now? It's like, I need a break, or I need, you know, this food or whatever. And then you're going to see the progression as you begin to give to yourself more. And I really encourage you to write this down in a journal where you can track this. You will see the progression, how this, what do I really need right now? Or what do I really want right now? It's going to go into, I want to give this to someone. I want to give this offering. I want to volunteer my time. I want to spend uh, time maybe with someone I haven't talked to for a long time. So when you allow yourself to first follow those steps and be selfish, there's just so much love coming from that because it's that abundance. You're tuning into that abundance because you're able to live it first. So that is your action step. Really ask yourself, what do I really need right now? And now if uh, I mentioned that during the video, but if you want to dive deeper with this, because this, this, this does take time, this is a muscle that has to be built, that has to be exercised. If you want to really just a shortcut to that, because people, again, take months, years, they take years, they take decades to move through this journey, to attain this freedom, to attain this connection. So if you want a shortcut to this, I'm opening, um, a few spots, three spots for my one-on-one -on -one containers. That is a three and a six month container, depending on the needs of the client. And um, yes, there's going to be a link below. If you'd like to sign up for it, let me know. And we can have a free call to see whether I can support you because I only take clients that I know I can help and whose vision I believe and who you know I'm interested to work with. So you can fill in the questionnaire and I'll reach out to you. Then we can have a call to discuss whether we're a match to see if it works for you, if it works for me and we'll move from there. So on this note, I thank you so much for watching. I thank you for doing the work. I really thank you for doing the work because so many people are there building this, you know, bulletproof life thinking that it's the money it's the relationships it's all these outer circumstances that don't last. And you're here showing up for something deeper. So I thank you for that. And I'm wishing you a powerful day.